Welcome to the pause and joy precept of just for today. Do not anger. And it is a Reiki precept that is actually the second one. And I wanted to start with that one because I feel that there is a lot of anger in um, the consciousness that people are processing or they're trying to process, but you have to know uh, that anger is really a secondary emotion. It's a reaction. And when we start to work with just for today, do not anger. Also in the precepts, the precepts are not laws. They're not um, rules. And they are more rem remembrances. It's like when people want to be present or have to be present. It's also a remembrance that you are on automatic pilot and that you're not present. So really kind of being here now, as Ram Das used to say, that remembrance to be here with yourself. But then that poses the question of who are you? What self? So let's go to these precepts as just like reminders, pings in your day of to remember. Remember that you have been on automatic pilot for the last hour and that you are overthinking in your head ruminating. So let us talk about this precept just for today. Do not anger. And these precepts were a kind of secret invitation, right? They were a secret process to invite happiness. Right? They were to invite happiness into your life and ultimately healing. And Azui Senzi was very deliberate in which ones he chose for a Reiki practice. And he came from Buddhism. So that was his context. So he took just for today. Also, we hear that in the West in AA, just for today. I'm gonna to try and stay sober just for today. I'm gonna to have those parts bite into me, but I'm just gonna be it just, it's just for today. And just for today, I'm not gonna anger. The Japanese version of this precept is today anger not just much more direct today anger not so you can decide which one or both suit you that feels right maybe you'll start the mornings with just for today, do not anger. 
But then when you find yourself in the process of being angry, then you can say, oh, that's right, anger not, anger not. Because anger is the secondary reaction to something else. And when we have the the outburst, you know when you see a toddler and we call it a tantrum? It is a it's a it's an outburst of something that they haven't been able to articulate. The angry Right? They're showing you they're angry because something else has happened. They were maybe mocked in class. They were bullied. They didn't understand why this other kid was being mean to them. So they reacted in anger they raged against the machine. So when we are angry, anger can blind us. Anger can blind us to what we need to do, what we need to look at in ourselves. So what would, as a secondary um, tool really to kind of just explode and burst in anger because what is the underlying ignition? <laughs> and sometimes that is when we see something that's in, uh, 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 unjust. I think that's universal. I think when we see things that are unjust in the consciousness, when we see it on social media, when we see it on uh, the news, and it invokes anger in us because we either have been on the receiving end of something that's unjust or as humans, I think the wiring for thousands of years we have seen through history, unjust things happening. And that was ancestors activating at the injustices that are still being perpetrated today. Also, anger as a, a way to kind of take us off the ledge of feeling a sense of hopelessness, a sense of helplessness. Anger that you were maybe overlooked, that you don't get the recognition is a feeling of frustration and unjust unfairness. But we have to, because anger can consume us and it can blind us and it can make us ill. If we stay in anger, but rather what I would like you to maybe practice this week is to notice when you are angry. Maybe you're reading a news article. Maybe you are seeing something on social media and asking yourself, what is the underlying emotion feeling I am feeling, that anger is the reaction, anger is the outburst. Just like we did when we were children, 
when we couldn't articulate what just went down in kindergarten <laughs> or when we were seven with our best friend who dumped us. Like, what is it that is coming up for me? And sometimes it is a trigger for something that is unresolved. So then that can be an opportunity to see, oh, when I feel overlooked, that is because of that period in my life when I was in middle school or when I was growing up that I felt overlooked. In the family, at school, um, in the neighborhood. And then any trauma that that may be uh, telling you to look at. So this underlying frustration, injustice, um, helplessness, um, unfairness, like what is it that I can shift in that? What is it that I can um, reconcile? What is it I need to do? You can get angry and mad but it might be informing you to say, make a difference, throw your hat in the ring, change the system, create something. If you are, like I, I, I'm reminded of the stories that Tyler Perry talks about, how no one wanted to make his movies. So he created his own studio. He created his own space to create these movies that he wanted to make and he wanted to see. And then that has blossomed into his own studios in, I think it's Atlanta. So Anger can be very informative. And you can ask yourself, what can I do to help? What can I do to contribute? And that might be you being, being mindful and being present in your own life. With that, with those situations, with those... Um, but that collective consciousness and how you're going to change it, say in your business, in your company, in, uh, in your family, in your life. So anger is a reaction. It's a secondary expression to something that sometimes cannot be expressed because it is just so mind-blowing or confusing or uh, unjust. But if you're on the freeway and you're angry, at someone cutting you off or really your outburst is did they not see me did they not see me they could have killed me yes but did they not see me what are they not looking at why are they not present and sometimes that is about not being seen not being considered, my life not being considered. Where is that coming up maybe in your relationships? Maybe where is that coming up in your job? Where you feel like you're overlooked and not considered or that you're just a number. So this is Reiki precept number two just for today. 
do not anger. For today, anger not. If you want to look at the Japanese aspects of these precepts. And the precepts are reminders. They're not, they're not a way for you to self-blame yourself that you got angry. It's a being able to see the anger and then excavate what's underneath it. Because a real spiritual practice is a gentle polishing of everywhere we all have blind spots, everywhere that we want to be better and show up better in our lives and be in much more harmony with ourselves and others. Because there's so many people doing work now on themselves. There's so many people reading books. There's so many people putting things into practice that we have to look at these things because we are responsible for our own energy. And that energy is an eruption that comes out as anger. And maybe you have somebody that you live with that they are angry, but really they are frustrated. You know, I was talking to someone earlier that was angry about something. And it was something that this person couldn't change. But he could change his response to what was happening by throwing his hat in the ring. Now we can get angry at the system. We can get angry at the way things are. But if we don't participate in making things obsolete or making them better, then, then you're just expelling this eruption that is not being used into the doing and action that you could take, that could be a, an opportunity for you. So just for today, Does anybody want to add anything? Does anybody want to ask me anything? Does anybody have anything that they have to say? Because I want these next four weeks to be um, somewhat of a discussion. So, you know, if you think of something, you can maybe send me a DM and then we can discuss it next Thursday. But these are just short moments for us to consider. Consider our own anger. Consider our own secondary outbursts of anger, of what really is the, the missile of that. What really is going on underneath that? What is it I'm really feeling that I can then sit with, journal about, ask, um, contemplate, tap on? Because anger is a very genetic aspect. And this is what's happening in the healing world. You can't shift something that's generic. You know, when I'm, what I'm really good at isn't tapping. It is unpacking what really is going on with you. And I create an intimacy with the person 
that they always say to me, I don't know why I'm telling you this because I've never said this out loud or I've never been able to express this. Because anger doesn't interest me. What shifts people are their personal, unique feelings of being unheard, their frustrations, their own unique perspective of what they're going through that is in turmoil because of unfairness and how they came to that and what that specific cluster happened in their life. That is what is collapsed. That is the root, not anger. Anger is the reaction. It is a byproduct. of something very personal. So it's been so good chatting with you, although none of you gave me a question. So maybe next week you'll have some questions, some thoughts, DM me, and we'll discuss it next week. I just want to make these just little snippets that you can 